Hello and welcome to another Sebastian Kangaroo tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you some programming using a scripting procedural scripting language called Ruby. If you're using Mac or Linux, it probably will come along by default. It definitely will come along by default if you're using Mac, and most Linux distros have it by default. So, let's get started. So if you don't know what a programming language is, it's basically a list. It's basically an instructions for your computer to follow. So, um, like the instructions for you to build a Lego set or something. It's just a set of instructions. So, programming is not done in anything like web things. It's actually just regular text. So, it's, um... Some, some languages are actually fairly readable, too. So, okay, so let's get started. Let's make the most simple program possible, okay? I'm going to say puts. And then you're going to create two quotes. And you're going to type, hello, world. Save this. Run it. will say hello world if you don't know what I was doing right here I will be doing a bash tutorial soon too so that is a hello world program now what's it doing it's putting out on screen the text inside of these two quotes which is hello world now make sure you've got quotes because if you don't have quotes it won't recognize that as text. It's called a string, by the way. We'll talk about that more later. So, it printed hello world. And we can change what's in here. We can put sky is blue. You can put whatever you want as long as it's in between those two quotes. Let's move on. So, what can we do with this text? Well, we could put it in a container called a variable. So now, just like in math, x equals hello world. This is saying x is now a variable, basically a big container to hold whatever you want, and it's going to hold this text. Okay. So now if we puts, we're going to say put whatever comes after puts out on stream, and we're going to put x. So whatever is inside of x, we're going to put out on the screen. So if we save it and run it, it's going to say hello world, just like what x contains. And we can change this text, and it will update. So if we want to say hello world, run it. It'll say hello worlds. And we can run the same thing twice. This is running from top to bottom. So we can print X and then print X again. So it'll run, it'll put this inside of a variable. X will contain hello world. Then it will put X on the screen. Then it will put X on the screen again. So if we run this now. Oops, I forgot to save. I'm sorry. Right now, it'll say, hello worlds, hello worlds. And again, if we change this text, it will update in both of these because they're pointing to the exact same variable. There you go. So, what exactly can variables hold? Variables can hold what's called a string. It can hold a string, which is a sequence of letters or symbols or numbers. We can put anything we want in between these quotes. Then we can have integers. And 
and we can have floats, which are numbers with decimals. Okay. And we can name variables whatever we want. We could name this guy, the string, Bob. We could name the integer, Joe. And we could name the float, raft. And if we print, I mean, I'm sorry, if we put Bob, then we put Joe, then we put Raft, it'll print each of these guys out. So the variable Bob contains hello programmer, the variable Joe contains number 10, and the variable Raft contains the number 10.1. Now, what's the difference between this? And this. Let's get rid of the graph for now. So, this is 10, and this is 10. Strings can contain letters, numbers, and symbols. So we could put anything we want in here. So, we have 10 in here, and we've got 10 as an integer. So, what's the difference? If we print, if we run this it'll print 10 and 10. So what's the difference? Well, programming languages can do math. They can be calculators too. So if we were to add, let's add another variable and give it the value of 30. If we were to add x plus joe, we would get 40 because it's adding 30 and 10. So 30 plus 10 is 40 and it just ran it right there. So what about this? It comes if we add 10 plus, and we'll put 30 in quotes. If we add 10 plus 30, Bob plus X, and run this. We get 1,030. What's that? Well, it's actually doing a thing called concatenation. And that's, it's just smushing these two strings together. And they don't have to be numbers. They could be letters, too. We could say x and then y. If we run this, it'll say x, y. And it's just merging these two strings together. That's concatenation. And so we could say, hello, we could say this, name this variable message. We could say, hello. And we could make this variable name. And we'll set it to spice to kangaroo. And if we now puts message plus name and save it and run it, it'll say hello spastic kangaroo. It's just concatenating these two strings. So you've learned about concatenation, you've learned about variables, and you've learned about the puts function, which prints stuff out on screen. So let's now go on and see what else we can do with integers. So let's see. We can add number one, we're going to set it to 10, and number two, we're going to set it to 20. And if we add number one plus number two and run it, We'll get 30, which you'd expect. But we can also subtract number 1 minus number 2. And we get negative 10 because 10 minus 20 is negative 10. We can multiply 200 because that's 10 times 20. And we can divide. And since these aren't floats, it's running as an integer. So if we flip these two numbers around, 
we divide 20 by 10, it'll say 2. If we put it back to what it was before, it said 0 because it's rounding, because it's an integers, and integers cannot uh, do decimals. But if we were to say 20.0 divided by 10.0, both of those are floats now, and we divide, it'll get 0.5. I'm going to teach you one more thing, and that's how to get user input. So, we're going to have the computer ask what the name of the user is, and then we're going to have it print out hello, and it's going to print the name of the user. That was a little bit confusing, but you'll understand when I go through it. Okay, so we're going to say hello, puts hello. What, what is your name? And we're going to say name equals gets.chunk. Now, gets is going to take whatever the user types, and I'll explain what the dot chunk means way later, because that's going to be, um, that's what's called a function. But don't worry about that for now, just make sure to add that. Okay? And... So name equals gets.chump, and we're going to say puts hello, and we're going to concatenate that with the name. Okay, so now if we run this, hello, what is your name? Spastic kangaroo, if I press enter, it'll say hello, the spastic kangaroo. Homework, I guess, is going to be to create a program that will take the user's first name and their last name. It'll ask, get their first name first, and then their last name next. So it'll be, hello, what is your first name? Then it'll be, hello, what is your last name? And you're going to concatenate that at the end. So thank you for watching this Spastic Kangaroo tutorial. I hope you learned something. Subscribe if you want to see more programming slash art tutorials, and thanks for watching. See y'all later.